Albus Main is happy to go. Happy Main in the forest. Jump in. Of course, you hate the muddy way. What up, ladies and gentlemen? Jesse Warden here. We are once again at the George Washington National Forest. And we're on the Wild Oak Loop. I went, I went to Lori Ridge and it said no camping. So it was like nine miles. I'm like, sweet. Albus and I will do three and a half, find a campsite. It'd be cool, right? Then I get there, it's like no camping. And there's no network, so I have to drive back to civilization so I could plan my 40 minute detour to Wild Oak Loop. I didn't want to come here unless I had three days because this is a 30 mile trek and I am not doing 30 miles. <laughs> Bellic was supposed to come with me, a friend of mine, but we got Albus man. So we are gonna go maybe about three miles, four miles, see how far we can go up this mountain. Look for water. If not, I brought a ton of water with us as a plan B. So that way when I bring friends here, we'll know what the camping site is, we'll know where water is, you know what I mean? I want to make sure it's a pleasurable experience for him, so that's what we're doing. We're only doing a one night. It's like 66, maybe a low of 60 at night. So yeah, it's very mild, but I'm sweating bullets because it's super humid. And we're going straight uphill. And Albus isn't feeling so hot. He's been off his meds for a while, which helps with his thyroid. So it's good for him. It's good for me. I haven't slept in four days. Last night I finally got eight hours. I'm pumped, I'm pumped. Let's do this. I filled out the uh, paperwork. Oh, I met a guy named Zach, nice kid. He was telling me there's a really good view up here. So if Abbas and I make it, great. If we don't, it's okay. We'll come back to this place. It's a long trek. So we got some new gear. We got a headlamp this time. 350 lumens. Rated REI's top of 2021 headlamp. It's got a dimmer. It auto remembers your setting when you turn it off and back on. So it doesn't come super bright. And pretty long burn time, AKA how long everything lasts. So I can see in the dark now, finally. It's the only lantern I brought. <laughs> But it takes uh, triple A's, which I don't care. I have kids, right? But a lot of people online like, I want double A's. And then knife, I believe it's a 511 basic. And it's only 10 bucks. But as you can see, it works. <laughs> I stabbed myself right between my thumb and my pointer finger when I was taken out of the case. Pretty funny. We're gonna test it out for bushcraft and food prep. The other. Gerber is great for food prep because it's big and the serrated edge is good for cutting paracord, but I don't like it for like creating feather sticks, but tonning's okay. It's a little lighter than my machete is, but it's not good to bang on it. You know what I mean? Look at that. Fat wood just lying on the trail. Albus, it's like Providence is speaking to us. That's coming with me. I'm gonna attach that to my side. Yeah. Nah, it doesn't really smell like turpentine though. Maybe not. Oh well. It's all right, it's still a good omen. What is that? Look at that little guy. Look at that little guy. Oh, he's a weedle. He's a weedle man. He's a weedle. I gotta walk around that guy. Don't step on him. As you can see from my sweaty face, Alice and I have been walking for about Three miles, not in his plan. We've only gone 200 yards up the mountain. <laughs> it says 72, there's no way. Humidity's like, whatever, but hey, 
Speaking of which, downhill, downhill, let's take a break. It looks like the Rangers did a controlled burn because you can see a ton of these cinched trees where other trees are just fine, especially the lower branches where the rest, look at the top, they're fine. But a lot of these, you know, under branches and thinner trees just absolutely burned their crisp and fallen. It looks like they came and then cut them down. As you can see, a lot of them are singed, which makes finding fatwood kind of hard. And some of the fatwood is, well, it's burnt. <laughs> it's like, I, I wanted to burn it. They're like, no, us first. Found the first campsite. It's got a fire pit like six feet <laughs> from the trail. Really big one. Campsite can only fit one small tent or a hammock though, really tight next to the trees. But it is flat, it's nice. And it's uh, up the incline. So I started uh, All Trails, I think it's called. And it shows another campsite about maybe 10 minutes up. So we're gonna keep walking. Where are you going? You hot and tired? Me too. You got this, buddy. Go, go, go. No? Okay. You're tired. I don't blame you. Oh, like grass. Okay. Whew. Uh, another break, you're going to get a tick, buddy. I thought I knocked one off him and one off me. Almost there, I was at the top of the mountain. <sighs> I don't know what it's gonna look like, I've never been here. That sense of adventure. Yeah, man. Almost there. Wow, it's a really steep hill. We can do it. Uh, wow. That's really high. Okay, we're gonna take a break. Jeez. Yeah, Abbas is like, hell, heck, let's keep going. I'm like, nah, man, we're good. We saw this campsite on the way up, but the problem I have with it is that the fire pit, it's kind of neat with those rocks, it could block you from the wind, but the fire pit is literally right under a tree and right next to a pine. Like, <laughs> see, look at the leaves. They're like, uh, we died, it was too hot. Like, not intelligent, man. It should be there, but still a little close to this pine. So we're gonna go the one downhill. So I think I'm gonna stay here for tonight. Got about two hours of sunlight left, maybe maybe two and a half. And the worry is I can go by the stream. There's a lot of water actually. It runs to a lake down there, but I am so worried that A, I won't be able to camp there. B, there's no sights. C, it's not actually water. It's like, you know, a really nasty stream which we passed. Uh, or <laughs> it'll get dark. We're gonna set up camp here and then I'm gonna get some firewood. We'll make dinner, but first, you know, I gotta drink some water, man. Downhill's easy, but it was hot. It didn't feel like 72. All right. Take five hours, man.
Don't move. She's flattish. Before I start getting some firewood, here is the fire pit. And it's got some small ones near it, but not so sure about that guy. It looks a little dry. We'll have to watch him. But anyway, we've got a, a small enough place with big enough rocks for pit. So I'm not going to use, obviously, my water. There's no water on this bloody mountain. It's called Grindstone Mountain, and there's nothing. And I brought two tarps, but I don't think I'll need it. A friend of mine didn't come, and it's not supposed to rain. so. I got a makeshift hook for my bag to get it off the ground. And for now, I'm gonna put the food here and then later we'll find a, a good place for a bear bag. It's probably somewhere around here. And then that's Albus's bag of poo. And then I set the ridge runner up on this tree and that really small tree. Unfortunately, it was the only place I could get where my tarp would fit. So I've got it pitched up for now. I'll pitch it lower when I go to sleep, but if you haven't seen the Ridge Runner, the cool thing about the Ridge Runner is that it's got these saddlebags, which are super deep for tops. I've got a closable bug net, and so if you attach it, it's not actually on your face. Below, I've got my 20 degree underquilt. I think it down to 60 tonight, so this will work. You can see it's a 20 degree. But I've added my own drip lines. I've tested them in the major deluge that we had, and they worked out quite well. The water comes down here, it just hits this guy and drops. And I've got one for each of the lines and they're just a simple knot here. I also do one for the shot cord too because I saw the water hitting that. So that's the camp and I'm gonna get some firewood. I'm gonna feed this tired man. There's a lot of wood that's hanging, which is great because it's not on the ground and super rotten. So I could probably use that. And I hope I have enough fat wood. I haven't really found a lot. I've got these really two small ones, but it really smelled like turpentine right here. So hopefully that one plus the other one will be enough. I'm gonna. Go get some firewood, start a fire and start cooking. I love this headlamp, man. It's an absolute game changer. I should have bought this the first, first time I went out. Absolutely. Super great. Makes things so much easier at night. Not a stressful, frustrating thing. And I don't have to use my lanterns or candlelight. I can just look, do stuff. And then when I'm done, I can turn it off and enjoy the candles. And that's really nice. So, oh, I'm passing. See you in the morning. Good morning. There was this bird that made a noise all night. And I mean, from like midnight till six in the morning. And my earplugs didn't stop it. And he had a friend and it was the same song over and over and over. And I like techno, so I'm fine with repetition. Like, totally fine with that. 
But dude, what are you doing? Like birds are supposed to sleep, but he was up all night. I don't know what he's doing, dude. What did we learn? We learned a few things. Number one, you don't set your hammock on a tree that really can't support your weight like times a thousand. Because as soon as you sit down, it completely negates the hang that you got. And all hammocks are about hang. If it's a gathered in, you want it really saggy, just so. The taut ridge line. If you're a bridge, you want it nice and taut to a point around 25 degrees. So it's supported and your feet are a little bit higher. And that's just not what happened with this particular tree I chose. Not good. Number two is bug thing. I forget. I'll put the name in the description. It's amazing. There were gigantic mosquitoes, like the ones that, you know, don't bite you. Or beetles, but like nothing bothered. As long as I kept it and stayed in the same space and the wind wasn't too high. I did put it upwind a little bit. That was amazing. No bugs. Number three, always keep the hammock bug net closed when I'm not in it because a lot of gigantic black soldier ants around here. By keeping it closed, they didn't go inside. The lanterns really added a lot to ambience. I always wonder why I carry them, but it made a difference. I like them. And what else did we Four, ugh, when they say on the reviews that water is a problem, listen to them and bring your own water. <laughs> There's no water up here for miles. You just have to walk around. It's miserable. Miserable. Ooh, I really shouldn't take for granted the uh, twigs of the fatwood. Basically evergreen pine trees. They started really well. I was impressed. Fire. Are you impressed, Alves? I was impressed. He really wants to climb up. <laughs> he likes climbing up high things. Come here, buddy. Ready to go? Goofy man. Ah, nice. Coffee was a bust. I didn't feel like making a fire and then using half of it to make the coffee and then the other half to put the fire out and mush it with mud. Heck with that. Speaking of sheets, where we're going for coffee. I have been coming the same road to get here and there's sheets right before you get to anything where you're near the wilderness. And if you're not aware it's like a gas station that has or petrol station that has a bunch of snacks and food you can order from a kiosk it's been you know reasonably crowded for the, the petrol gas and stuff but not for food so every two weeks every three weeks i come camping it gets more and more packed it was a mob scene absolute mob scene there was lines to get fuel and that's just a good sign there's a picture I'll show you from a tweet I received where one of the Delta pilots, when they were consolidating their fleets, he left a note on the dashboard of it. And he said that, hey, if you're picking this up, I uh, just want you to know it's probably the you know, light at the end of the tunnel. And just have a good flight. Be careful when you take it out. I thought that was awesome, right? So you, you see signs of healing. You see signs of the pandemic slowly easing, at least in America. I know Brazil and... India are getting destroyed right now. It's really awful. And even London was in a lockdown for two weeks in some places, but it's, it's just nice to see. It's nice to see. And some people are still wearing masks, which is cool. Some are not, which is hopefully cool if they're 
vaccinated, not spreading things, but yeah, just wonderful to see, man. Really, really happy. So obviously nature, you know, is green. It's growing, it's healing. It's good to see the America doing the same. Really, really amazing, amazing feeling. So I'm gonna get coffee to celebrate. <laughs> Again, strange feeling. Her Majesty and I went back to a our favorite Mexican restaurant called Mexico here in Richmond, and it's just surreal. It's almost like nothing's changed, but uh, like a whole year has just been put on pause. It's been very difficult for some people to readjust to the bounds of people. I'm completely fine with it. I dive head first. I know a lot of other introverts, or just some who've been away for a year. It's very difficult for them. A lot of anxiety. They do it a little bit, get very frustrated, they get angry. And it's just been, it's for some people it's very difficult to say, I'm celebrating the pandemic's over. A lot of them has been sudden realization. Some of them has been a slow reacclimation. For me, it's just, you know, I've been doing it, but I didn't really realize, you know, that I'm, I'm readjusting to life. I mean, I'm still not back at the office for work, but a lot of things are slowly returning to normal. And by slow, that I mean like, quickly considering how much patience we've had to you know be a way for years so it's uh it's been good it's been good it's been good hadn't it i was what do you think been good Ugh.